Medical imaging has allowed us to diagnose many prevalent diseases, but the problem is it's not accessible to everyone. Today's scanners like MRI, PET, and CT cost several million dollars. And there are very long wait times, as some of you might unfortunately know, delaying critical diagnoses. They're also not portable. So you have to bring all suspected patients to the hospital, even if they turn out to have no diagnosis, no illness. We're building a $1,000 portable brain scanner whose fidelity is great enough to image many of the diseases that are currently imaged using MRI, PET, and CT. And our technology is using just light and sound, which significantly reduces its cost. Here we show in computer simulations that we're able to penetrate the thick skull and image a brain tumor. So in contrast to MRI, which can take over an hour to obtain a scan, our device is able to obtain a scan in less than two minutes. In addition, Axon is completely non-invasive and costs less than $1,000. Due to the low cost and portability of Axon, we envision it being used in a variety of environments. For example, it can be used in ambulances, um, in physician's offices as a standard examination tool for every checkup, and on sports fields. So you can get instant on-site diagnosis of injuries and diseases. And maybe even one day you can use it in the home. So we're currently finishing our, building our first proof of concept and we'll get our first real world images next week. Uh, by early 2020, we will complete our first fully functioning prototype for brain imaging. This is what medical imaging looked like 50 years ago. And this is what it could look like today. If you um, think you can help us with uh, mentorship or technical help or in the future capital, or if you know people who can, uh, please reach out. Thank you. Great. Um, so a few, few quick questions. So basically, uh, if I've, um, this is kind of uh, like an old school Silicon Valley concept in the sense that, um, you know, if you can make it work, uh, the, the market risk is, I think, relatively low. Um, you know, it's really all about the technical risk of, of whether you can make the thing, thing function. Um, with that said, for kind of the initial markets, um, you know, have you given thought as to, you know, are you trying to immediately diagnose and treat diseases or would you think about, let's say, going more on the less regulated, uh, but fit, you know, fitness or, or kind of that, that spectrum or how are you thinking about your initial market? Yeah, in terms of the initial market, so we're not sure yet. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, what we currently think would be a good initial market would be the research community, um, targeting mm -hmm. researchers who can incorporate their product into in our product into um, their research due to the portability and low cost. Um, and also it can image different um, molecules that previously haven't been able to have been imaged before. So that's our first, um, at least as it currently stands, our first target market. That's interesting. Illumina successfully managed to bridge out of the research market into the commercial market. So you should you know, just kind of take a look at that. The tricky part is researchers often don't have much in the way of discretionary budget for new instruments. And, uh, but though, I guess if yours is, is cheap enough, um, they might tolerate uh, you know, issues with the first version or second version or third version because it's for studies. And then hopefully you, you get it to be prestigious enough with a bunch of publications that then you can start using it in practice. That's interesting strategy. Um, are, what, are there any limitations in terms of what can be imaged? We're currently, um, so we don't know yet. Um, it's still very early stage technology. Um, it has potential to image um, many of the things that are currently imaged using MRI. Um, Specifically right now, we're targeting hemoglobin, um, so to image blood throughout the brain, um, which can allow you to detect many uh, diseases that are blood related, um, including cancer in the brain. Um, but we need further tests to evaluate exactly what the full potential of the tech would be. Great. Um, yeah, so somebody, somebody's asking the question of what's the regulatory approval path from here to getting devices in the market. I know that's actually a very long and challenging um, path, um, but have you, have you put any thought into that? So what's great about our technology 
um, is that it doesn't use any, um, any sophisticated um, technology that may, um, that, that's very invasive. Um, so in terms of, and, in ter and the tech itself is just using light and sound. Um, so the regulation isn't as that strict, um, but it's still something, it's something that we need to continue to look into. Yeah, in, in the U.S., um, you'd probably look at you'd look at it as probably a class two device um, under five ten k. But you know, you, you might have to say that. Um, and you know, last question is: Is there something? So I asked whether there are limitations. Is there something that it's particularly good at, um, where you could think of as you know, the term is overused, but like the the killer app of it, or the very first thing that you know you market this for, and it's extremely good for this relative to the status quo. So we've spoken with many physicians. Um, and one thing that they tell us that could be um, that it could be extremely useful for is to image bleeding um, in the brain, which is um, quite common, um, a quite common uh, occurrence, um, and can be imaged quite superficially on on the brain. So you don't need very great penetration depth, which is the greatest um, limitation. Yeah, the, the tricky part about that is getting your training sample because you know, you don't want to be testing that in production with someone who actually has a brain bleed, you know, for the first time. So you'd have to, you have to think about how your, your lab sample can actually reflect the, you know, I mean, you've got a brain bleed. It's a very real time thing. You can't set up an instrument just has to you know, work. Um, so you might, might put some fun to, I mean, I actually was thinking you might try to start with animals. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like there's a lot of livestock and agriculture kind of potential applications of this, which are lower stakes. Um, that, you know, might, might be interesting. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.